So the title of today is, as you know, Clean Break, Working Differently, question mark. And it's the latest in series and Humanities Research Council funded project. Our umbrella title for that project has a long one, of course. This, and I think most of you will have seen the website that we have where um, uh, the, the invitation to these events was held. So it's an interdisciplinary project led by Kiva Macavinci of Queen Mary University of London and Sarah Barclay, University of Reading, in assorted squares that you can identify. Um, they are both in theatre and performance studies. And Amory Green at the University of Leicester and me, Deborah Dean, at the University of Warwick and our fields of study of work and employment relations. Clean Break, for those of you who aren't familiar, I believe most of the audience will be, but uh, if not, is a theatre company working with women with experience of the criminal justice system. And we're working in partnership with Clean Break in exploring it as a women only organisation, which has recently changed its uh, business and operating model, which was more of the focus of this morning, although I believe we'll be touching on it. Um, and in terms of its theatre practices and its impact on the art sector and on the criminal justice sector. We have other collaborators on this project, which is one of its great joys, I have to say, including Molly McPhee and Sue Mayo, who are involved in our next event in June, which will be an exploration of Clean Break's archive at the Bishopsgate Institute, and our artist in residence, Laura Dean, whose work responding to the project and to Clean Break's work itself is on our website in a, in a living gallery. Clean Break was initiated by women in HMP Aspen Grange in 1979 and has since become an internationally recognised theatre, education and advocacy organisation which places stories of women, crime and punishment centre stage. And the aim of our project, new understandings about Clean Break's impact on contemporary British theatre. It's highly unusual organisational approach of learning through trying to listen to the voices involved in its work and how this practice, these practices, can inform policy and practitioner discussion about organisational leadership in both the arts and in criminal justice. The project involves a mixture of interviews with a range of Clean Break stakeholders, including past and current staff, members and external members. We've also engaged in observation, management and board meetings, although whether it's observation or lurking, I'm not quite sure. On online, it's been a fascinating experience during COVID and the company has been extraordinarily generous in uh, allowing us to observe them during this extremely testing period. Um, so the project has also funded uh, the tour of a Clean Break production, Sweatbox by Chloe Moss, featuring three members of Clean Break, which is set in a decommissioned prison van. The tour was cut short because of COVID and is now film directed by uh, one of the company's joint artistic directors, Anna Herman, and is being launched formally on the 8th of June. So through this project's seminars, conferences, exhibitions, podcasts, we hope, and publications, we're exploring wider issues, including the criminalisation of women, theatre practices with incarcerated women in different cultural contexts, and the implications of COVID-19 for incarcerated women and the response of Oxford organisations and collaborative practices between organisations. So um, I'm going to uh, move on now to introduce our um, wonderful speakers today. I've mentioned already one joint artistic director, Anna Herman, the other artistic 
director is Roshan McBrain, who is joining us to speak today. And Roshin, Anna and Erin form a triumvirate. They are a three CEO leadership team, which is itself highly unusual. And Roshin has been joint artistic director of Clean Break since 2018. Prior to that, she was also worked in Clean Break as head of the artistic program with special responsibility for commissioning and developing writers and artists, which I imagine we'll be hearing a bit more about today. And she's a very experienced director in a range of uh, theatres and indeed countries. Phil McCormack will be speaking after Roisin. Hi, Phil. He is the head of participation at the house, which is where Clean Break co-produced its extraordinary production of Blank by again, the focus of today. Phil leads at the Donmar on school and community programs through the Donmar's Discover program and is also a director himself working with communities and young people again nationally and internationally. After they have spoken Sarah Bartley will be facilitating a discussion uh, between the two of them about of collaboration on blank and then we'll have a break and after the break we'll be joined by Shona Babayemi uh, wonderful actor and Clean Break member who was part of the cast of Blank to discuss between the three of them uh, their experiences of this amazing production. So um, I think without further ado, that was quite an extended introduction, I'm going to pass over to Roisin. Thank you so much, Deborah. It's wonderful to be here today. Um, and as you mentioned, I'm going to talk about our partnership, our co-production with the Donmar Warehouse. Partnership has been essential to Clean Break from the start and has always been a complexity for us for, at, since at the same time. The organization's roots were cemented by the partnership between our founders, Jenny Hicks and Jacqueline Helbra, and a woman called Sue McCormick, who was a governor at HMP Ascombe Grange when the women were serving there and was a major supporter of the pair and their idea to create Clean Break. It's a brilliant example of how complex our dependency on partnership is too. Sue frequently acted as a referee and vouched for Jenny and Jackie's integrity and character in applying for funding and support in the early days. Although this was invaluable, it also highlights a barrier that we grapple with still at Clean Break. The conflicting barrier of being on the periphery, whilst also wanting and needing to be in the center. Ours is a place of agitation, of uniqueness, of not being main stage. But the reason for our existence means we want to be heard and to create change from within, as well as driving from the outside. One of our core values is collaboration. We know that by being part of all of the sectors we work with, uh, we become stronger and vitally can expand the reach of our voice and message and fulfill our vision of a society where women can realize their full potential free of criminalization. We partner with women's centers to reach more women. We have had fruitful partnerships with our local council to deliver education work. We're here today because, one, because of one of our vital research partnerships. But what I want to focus on, as I said at the top, is how we partner within the theater sector. In a nutshell, we co-commission where possible. So as the genesis of the project and the journey of the project is as collaborative as possible from the outset. And co-producing most of our work has been a stated aim of the company for about five years. So again, in the past, there's countless examples of theatre partnerships, but it is now a strategic approach uh, in our current form. 
when it came to blank, in considering how we were going to get this produced, I should say just for context in case people don't know, Blank is a play by Alice Birch that we commissioned um, quite a long time ago now. I can't actually remember that part of the journey, but it was originally a co-commission with NT Connections. And we jointly commissioned 60 scenes that Alice had written. And then separate to that, there was a 40 scene commission that was specific to Clean Break. And in then finding a partner to produce the whole thing, it was looking at those 100 scenes. The Dommar was a really attractive partner on many levels when we were considering who we could go with to produce this big beast. And we approached the Dommar because we knew it needed to be invested in, or we wanted it to have basically the highest production values possible. We knew that the Dahmer had a committed audience who were really different to ours and also much more plentiful. And we also knew that if they wanted to, they could take a risk on what is thematically and structurally a very challenging play. But probably most importantly, we were optimistic about Michael Longhurst taking over and had the impression that he'd get it and its potential in that space which is often the way about when we're trying to get partners, it's sometimes about a vibe and an instinct and a conversation. The financial benefits of co-producing, and by that I'm talking about just the shared cost of creating work, cannot be overlooked. But when reflecting on this project, it's definitely lower on the lists of benefits and learnings that Clean Break gained through this collaboration. The question of reach, was a huge one for us, us on this journey. Because of this partnership, we reached over 10 times more audience members than we had averaged on previous years. But it's worth remembering also that we use our shows to hopefully reach new members, to galvanize new funders and to consolidate supporters. So when we're talking about reach a clean break, audience numbers matter but the whole cycle of our sustainability is also a big part of that equation. Emboldening our status with funders, audiences and future partners was a major outcome of the project. The project put our work in front of audiences that we just would not normally reach and in much larger numbers, which was obviously massive for us as well. Among the most joyous elements of co-producing certainly from my perspective, is the potential of artistic collaboration. And in the case of this project, although it wasn't a co-commissioned project, there was a lot of work that Alice had yet to do. So there was a brilliant opportunity for dramaturgical collaboration. So Claire Slater, who is the, the dramaturg of the Dommar, was a major collaborator on the project. And of course, just having Mike having Phil, having Anna, who was the casting director, was just massively enhanced the project in terms of extending the potential of this piece. And then it cannot go without saying that the cast and creatives that a Donmar production attracts is um, massively attractive when we're considering what collaboration looks like and where artistic collaboration lives. And although we do tend to work with the most extraordinary creatives and actors, suddenly you have access to a, a different um, collection of artists through working with the Dommar. And that was incredibly exciting and massively fruitful as well from our side. Creating opportunities for our members on main stages and outside of our safe space, but a space that we knew or we could hold our value could hold our values close um, was a huge, huge, huge benefit of this collaboration. And in fact, so in the cast of 12, two of the cast members were from our membership. And we learned from this collaboration and the openness of the Donmar, in fact, on this journey, but really from our members how or to be much more confident about that approach to 
having members as uh, professional performers in the work moving forward. So since then, we have made a commitment to ensure that every production we create has a minimum of 25% um, involvement either on stage or off stage from our members. We also learned a lot as we do, we continue to with each production about what care our members needs and how we, our members need, I should say, and how we are, how we are pursuing, um, how we look after our members and what difference that makes, but also what difference there may be in terms of need and best practice when we're making work. It, goes, it, it's sort of um, in a way maybe obvious about uh, the, what the benefit of working together in terms of what the artists gain and certainly what someone like me as an artistic director will have gained from working with the team at the Donmar, but the learning in fact from, uh, for our team was across the board. So in marketing, in development, um, there's a huge amount of shared learning that goes on in co-producing. And I think it's worth saying as well, a confidence that the team gained from recognizing their specialism as well through collaboration and through having an opportunity to have it seen or looked back at and shared back to them. And actually on that note, was that is one of the, the benefits, I suppose, of what this collaboration of this collaboration, we have a stated aim to enrich the theatre ecology with our practice. And we had a number of opportunities to offer um, training and hopefully just by practice to share and enrich, enrich um, specifically the Donmar community, but hopefully beyond in terms of those artists who we collaborated with on this. When it came to considering the challenges of this project, most of the challenges that we found were probably not specific to this collaboration, but more indicative of what happens when um, we as a small itinerant company, but also uh, how we specifically work and what that looks like in merging with a bigger building. So one of the kind of occasional barriers that does come up a lot when we're co-producing is about having to be part of a bigger picture in terms of schedule and time and another organization's planning and frankly not being able to influence that massively because in producing our co-production we're probably one of five or maybe ten productions in a season and trying to ensure that either we hold our place or we get it when we want it can be extremely challenging. Um, and then the other part is how we work in terms of the wraparound and added value we give to a production is, is really different from most other theatre companies in the UK. And within that, the majority of British theatres have a participation arm and an arm where work is produced for paying audiences. And we made a st strategic decision at Clean Break a few years ago to completely integrate this work. So when it comes to partnership, not only in terms of creating wraparound work, are we working with, um, for instance, a whole season's vision of engagement, but we're also trying to get in there uh, in terms of trying to give an increased value to um, what happens around the show, whether that's post-show discussions, additional workshops, engagement around that. And that can be very challenging uh, because there are plans already made, but also there are challenges in terms of financial commitment and prioritizing some of this work and allowing it to live on its own, but within a season or within a vision for a department within another organization. Finally, I'd like to reflect on how dependent the success of this project from our side was on individuals. It was always felt that from the top at the Donmar, there was deep understanding and buy-in into what we were jointly trying to achieve. But there were certain individuals but really, that really stood out in support of the whole thing. So it's brilliant that one of them, Phil, is here today. And I mentioned Anna and how that the casting process was 
massively extended by her compassion, insight, openness. Um, but I do, do want to talk about, there was a member of staff called Michael, who's the front of house manager at the Donmar. But in fact, he works for ATG, who at the time ran that building. And I just think it's really significant because one of the beautiful legacies of this project was that a number of Clean Break members, we always, when we partner with organizations, try and ensure that our members can volunteer as ushers within the organization we're working with. And we pursued that with the Domar. But this Michael was so open to the whole project and supportive of it that amongst the outcomes was that two of that those volunteers were offered employment um, from the from that collaboration. And again, so much of where Michael was coming from would have been about where he was briefed about understanding the project. But it, it is about individuals as well. And it brings me back to Jenny and Jackie and how fortuitous is, it was that they had this individual, Sue McCormick, a kind progressive governor. And obviously there's so much more in common with the Donmar and Clean Break, of course, than on the sur surface with two women serving sentences and an employee of the institution that's incarcerating them. But it does highlight how it's frequently one person who is invested in change that can make a difference. I'd like to finish with a quote from Jenny Hicks. She is referring in this quote to their collaboration in the early days with the women's organizations, but in the context of this conversation, it really speaks to me. Working together with great passion and energy in those early days was integral to the establishment and long life of Clean Break and other organizations which still exist today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Roisin. Uh, absolutely fascinating. Um, lots and lots to discuss in there, can't wait. Uh, but for now, thank you very much and we'll pass over to Bill. Hello, um, thank you. And thank you um, to Roisin for inviting me to join today. I think it shows how successful and fruitful our collaboration is that uh, that we're sharing it together and, and I think it's generally one of the most brilliant things to have been a part of so I'm delighted to be here with you today. Um, the the Donmar is like in history now is, 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 is a small theatre in Covent Garden it's got 251 seats and our, our the Donmar and our rehearsal site which is around the corner straddles the borders of Camden and Westminster. Um, Mike Longhurst, uh, this was part, of, Blank was part of Mike Longhurst's first um, uh, season at the Donmar. And the work that he was creating was under the banner of important stories through only told, widely shared. And when building the first season, I think it's probably one of the, I've never seen Mike so nervous in terms of pulling things together, about trying to then say what in your first season is the, the mission of the building. What is your taste as an artistic director? What is your aesthetic? What are you doing to bring people to this space? When Mike first started, he, he, he would speak a lot about the Donmar um, being known as like the actor's church, about this really sacred space in Covent Garden, which is, you know, is nationally and internationally renowned, like we transfer all over the place. But, uh, but in, in having that, how do we protect that whilst also ensure that we're making it a more democratic space? Whose stories are able to go on that stage and who are they told by? And I think that's the reason why like, I'm here today because we're under um, our, our work with Mike, then what we want to do is to ensure that we're constantly disrupting who that space is for. And the stories that are woven into that first season really um, chime with a lot of the things that feel most urgent to Mike as an artist and us as an organization. Um, the thing that is so important for us is, and, uh, is what is that small space, what the impact of that can be, how far that can go and also understanding what our impact is with our audiences. The Donmar traditionally been known as one of these theatres, which is what, more of a member's theatre. And over the, over the past two tenures under Mike and Henny, our current executive, and under um, our previous executive, Josie Rourke and Kate Packenham, is about trying to, they, 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 each uh, team have tried to push to ensure that there's a, there's a greater diversity in those audiences and people are able to um, see shows, whether that be uh, through uh, discounted schemes in-house or whether it be through the digital work that we do. 
the the co-production it was so important for Mike in that first season because it's also about like how can we learn from other arts organizations and partners and how can we share our space and our resource in different ways and we all fell in love with blank straight away as a play and it's something which I think is, as Rishi mentioned is so ambitious in its form it's like probably one of the most delightful and challenging artistic invites for an artist to play with because you've got these hundred scenes which can go in any order and it's structurally playful it's it's it has an aesthetic and a, a, the potential of a really high aesthetic for this really cool European work, which can bring in loads of different voices. And um, it's something that when Mike put us part of the first season, and when he shared that with us as a team and as a programming team, we were so delighted that we knew that a partnership with Clean Break was continuing, because for the previous five years, the Donmar had been engaged with um, Clean Break through our work on the Shakespeare trilogy which started off in a small theatre, in our small theatre, then it travelled uh, nationally and internationally, and then we ended up creating the trilogy at King's Cross where we built a theatre that was double the size of the Don Mar to house those stories. Of, um, and, 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 and then it's continued to this day to still work in prison. Um, so this uh, uh, collaboration continuing felt really, really important for us. But also, I think there was a difference in this collaboration this time. It was much more rooted and equal. Um, Clean Break were coming to us with that provocation and also knowing the, like, what we could do with that space, but also um, supporting Mike as an artist in that first tenure, um, which felt so important to us. And also because the work that Clean Break produced is iconic in terms of what it's uh, presented to the contemporary female canon. So to have Clean Break and have Alice Birch in the Don Mar space feels like one of the most exciting uh, collaborations that you could have, especially in that first season, because it's all about the statement of intent. What are we doing? What are we doing? And what is this space for? And when Mike talks about the Don Mar, he talks about it as being a real place to congregate and ensuring that what we could do is make that sure that space was full of discussion and debate and highlighting stories that were so important to us. And I think, Rishin, you really touched on that just there when you were saying about the, um, the, the things that you put around the work. One of the things that we were most delighted by, but also most challenging it, 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 when bringing this work together, is all the other stuff that we were doing around it. Because what you have is you have, you have two organisations coming together, and we all know with this play there's so much potential, so we're all trying to pin things off it to make sure we can really extend that impact. Alongside the production, we, um, through the Discover team, we worked with around 600 young people. And um, we worked with them through something called the Schools Programme, which brings young people that uh, rarely have access to theatre, um, that, are for, that like, we prioritise young people from across 32 boroughs in London with a high free school meal ratio. And we, we bring them to the Don Mar sometimes for the first time. And we do that by sending artists to them and saying, hi, we're the Don Mar, this is the work like it's a frame in the experience and then bringing them to the Don Mar and then having like post-show talks. So we were constantly running work through that process. And then we also delivered a long running a devising project called Take the Stage, which, work, which worked with a hundred young women and um, to produce four new scratch works, all using the production and the script as a starting point and making work which is uh, like really politically charged and socially engaged. The, the work that we were doing um, all around in terms of where we were programmed from the Don Mar, all that wraparound activity was and certainly what I was trying to embed with artists um, uh, is to inspire empathy. So if with, with the, the impact of this production is to allow young people to understand who else may be in their spaces and what they carry. The production does that brilliantly because it shows so many facets of different people. And what we could do is we can ensure that we embed in that from the off. One of the most joyous things in terms of some of the collaborations that we've had through this process is about trying to, um, uh, is meeting Clean Break and understanding the values of this organization. How um, Clean Break program work? Who are the artists that are recruited to be in those rooms with them um, in, in, in that work? And trying to ensure that what we were doing is we were bringing that into our processes. So when we start to program, you know, in terms of our process, we program the production, we go through that uh, creative process of building that team, the next line was then for myself and Anna and Roisin to sit down with the team at Clean Break and go, what are the other things that we can do? How can we enrich it? How can we share? At every point through the process, we were trying to meet each other and go, but how does this work for both of us? How can we elevate um, these opportunities together for both for these two sometimes different audiences or different young people um, to, to really ensure that we are maximizing the impact and potential of this show? 
Um, as we were going through the process as well, it was really key to think about those funders as well and those other stakeholders. Um, and so it, was, so it was important to run one of the events around that those, those are teamed up. So you can, you can uh, that, that pool of uh, donors and people who could in, like, have impact can share that space together, that the Don Mar team, the Clean Break team are together through that whole process. And um, when we, one of the things that was also really important from Clean Break, which is starts to become embedded as part of our practice, is about those other opportunities. And as Roshi mentioned there, um, about Michael Bond and that front of house team, that was one of the most delightful things. And it, it, it came from, all of these things come from uh, that the, the whole organization had to be behind, both organizations, but our organization had to be totally invested in this production and invest in that partnership. And when having someone like our theater manager who sits in another organization, who sits in this big, uh, this you know, in ATG, which is so different to our two organizations, but to have someone like that, um, in, that, in that role, see how important this is and nurture those opportunities and be really, really proud of what we can do there. That was one of the, like, one of the huge successes of it because then we know that the potential impact of that, of what it does in the wider sector, in that commercial realm, is huge as well about creating these other opportunities. What we were also trying to do as well is that, well, the Donmar does a lot of work with like under 16s, Clean Break does, does less so in that area. What is meeting in the middle there, which is the Clean Break run a great young artist program. So what we were trying to do is then create pathways for those young artists with our work. So there was a point through the process where they were buddying up and um, sharing rooms as, as facilitators, where the, the artists that were delivering take the stage were sharing their practice and then, and then, and then giving support around that those opportunities will continue afterwards. Sometimes it's about there's a certain bravery that Clean Break bring, where I go with some of those projects, there's already a lot of people on it, and Clean Break go, but what are the moments of opportunity that, are, that, 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 that you can give at every point? And things like that will be uh, things that will stay with us. The other things that we were learning as well through this process is the importance of, like obviously we all have really reusable really safeguarding processes, but how do we develop those further in a, in, in a meaningful way in the room? How do we ensure that when we are working with a big company of actors and then also a big participation program, what do we, uh, how do we uh, um, ensure that safe practice is running through that? And Clean Break was so generous from the start of this process. Like one of the first meetings for the whole Dunmar team was a session on trauma-informed practice. So then we were to think about what build, what, uh, what like Clean Break learned from their buildings and how they operate and how we need to make sure that runs through all of our buildings afterwards, which is not just in the rehearsal room, it's in the front of house space. And it's about us understanding who are coming to our space on a daily basis. The legacy of this work is huge. The partnerships that we've had with Clean Break and Roche, um, with Roisin and the team and Anna um, are huge for us. Like Anna is someone that, and Roisin will constantly be someone that I, you know, people in the organization will go to now. And that, so that shared relationship continues and, you know, and champion each other and each other's work and also getting a great understanding of things where, where needed. Um, but the, the impact for, for me, certainly with the work that we do, is, is all about those young people. And with this production and what we could do in this elevated form and be really, really bold in this work, we can build a new generation of artists, which is really exciting. But more importantly, it's about allowing these like 600 young people and all those audiences that we worked with to have a greater sense of empathy. And the challenges that people come up to, uh, come, up, come, come up against on a daily basis that we don't see through this production, we can do that. So there's many great things about this relationship. Um, and the many things that will continue. But the, when I think about the, the, one of the most important things, it's about the impact on those people that came to see the work. And we can only make that work through doing that together. Thank you. Thank you so much, Phil. Um, what a fascinating insight into this, this world beyond what we as an audience came to see. You know, we sat there and, and saw this remarkable play. And from both of you, we've heard what it takes to actually get it there. And even more exciting, the possibilities of, of what will continue from it. Um, I will stop myself there and perhaps allow Sarah now to discuss further with you some of the, some of the implications of what you've been talking about. So, Sarah, over to you. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. And thanks, Roisin and Phil, for those wonderful talks and, and being so generous in, in your kind of sharing of the experience of that collaboration and what it means to, to collaborate in the kind of contemporary theatre sector. Um, 
I've got piles and piles of notes from what you said, um, but um, I think maybe to sort of start with, um, it feels like it's sort of uh, important to maybe start with the text, start with blank and think about why blank, um, which is, as, as you've both said, a kind of quite experimental text, a kind of collage of different scenes. What does a, a, a performance like blank kind of gain from collaboration, given that it sort of captures so many different voices? I mean, I think one of the things that I didn't mention, and um, and I should have, which is great that you've asked me this question, Sarah, <laughs> um, was about scale um, for us. And so, you know, we have, as Phil uh, beautifully referenced, this extraordinary canon of, of clean break plays of 40 years of amazing stuff. However, the majority of those plays are two and three handers. And what Blank offered us was an opportunity, not just formally, but in terms of scale, to break that cycle. And it definitely was intentional in terms of how we commissioned it. But it is worth saying that the actual orchestration of that um, there's a massive skill base that's demanded in trying to bring that to life. And without this collaboration, we wouldn't have necessarily had the right tools for that. It was, it was totally vital and has been, it definitely shifted our vision as well in terms of um, continuing to challenge uh, in terms of scale and in terms of form. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't know if there's anything you want to add to that, Phil. I mean, that was really helpful to think about scale in, and blank as a play that that kind of demanded scale in a, in a different way for Clean Break. And I think, I think there was, you know, I think it was clear with Mike in that first season when we talk about scale that this was the biggest show that, this biggest show that he's put on that stage before and normally the Don Mars big shows are those musicals like that there that like the Don Mars being so known for but with this it's a different draw and the impact is so different and that was so important actually to have this incredible ensemble of like incredible female performers on stage with that incredible like that creative team is really was really really monumental to what we could do. Brilliant and I mean it does say it says everything for me and you know Alice knew this way before me uh, but that it was the whole you know, it was about the multitude of stories, the multitude of representation and the quantity that was so important politically about where she was coming from, you know, that this, these problems, the systematic endemic oppression of women, of criminalized individuals and their families is endemic. Mm. And um, just as an extension of that, to try and get that message across to an audience like the Don Mars um, was um, an extraordinary mm. opportunity, you know, because it isn't a mainstream narrative. Mm. And I think, yes, thinking from a sort of spectator's point of view that the, the necessity of that scale and how it feels as a spectator to be met with such scale at, in a time where, yeah, there's such an endemic problem in the criminal justice system is, is really important. I want to, to sort of pick up on something that you said, Phil, um, that really usefully kind of uh, gave a bit of a sort of history to the relationship that Clean Break have had um, and, and sort of talked about that Shakespeare trilogy that the two companies were involved with. Um, and you mentioned that Blank felt like a much more equal relationship. And I wonder if you could kind of both speak to that a little bit more, maybe in terms of that kind of equality uh, and, 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 and the shift there um, that was maybe, different or required um, with with this kind of more recent collaboration? I think it was like the, that brilliant, um, that development of that relationship, that there was so much that was learned through the Don Mar, through Trilogy, and then there was so much that the Don Mar became known for in terms of like uh, that audience shift as well about what that work was. Mm -hmm. You know, when the review was first presented, there's this sort of really horrendous review of it, which like was totally scathing. And then that's the thing that made Kate and Josie go, we're going to do, we're going to do two more. And, and, and because they knew this potential in that work, if you can, uh, like, uh, I'll, yeah, 
Uh, <laughs> I won't say who the review was. Um, <laughs> with, uh, with Blank and with it being part of that first season, you, you know, Rishi and, and I were talking about this the other day about when you're when you're programming a uh, lot of work, then the, the focus for us is split over five shows. Um, and that is that is so true in that first season. There was something there for us there about the size and scale of Blank and the, the co-production of it. That it was it was never just one of those fits, you know, it was this huge thing. And the and because the the offer from um from Alice and from Clean Break is this Rubik's Cube, then you you know it becomes like so formally exciting to play with. So the relationship changes from the off because then you've got like this the brilliant thing is that you have these two teams of artists and programmers that are coming together that are going, you know, like Claire Slater and Who's our, who's our dramaturg alongside Rasheen and the team there and Mike are all going, how do we make this work? And what potentially do you want to go in? And actually, what do we want to do with this version of Blank? I, I know, I'm, I'm most looking forward to seeing the next version of Blank to see what someone else does it and what path goes through it because it'll be so different. So the, 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 the creative process from the start was so, had to be so much more equal in terms of that in order to achieve that bold artistic uh, work that we were making. Yeah. And I suppose it's worth highlighting as well. I mean, the term co-production, it can mean so much. But when we worked with the Damar on the trilogy, we weren't co-producers. We had a consultative and collaborative um, uh, presence with very much the definitely the first and the second of the two productions. And then we worked with Philida um, in terms of going into prisons. But that is very different from being co-producers and collaborators on what was a clean break and on Mark production, you know. Mm -hmm. I would say as well, though, that the learning for us in terms of that collaboration, the trilogy collaboration, was seismic for Clean Break. And one of the things was definitely around our members on stage and the legacy of it is definitely connected and you can draw a through line from that in terms of a strategic company approach to Shona and Lucy on stage at the Donmar in our co-production. You know, it's a really phenomenal galvanizing legacy from the John Warren and Vilda. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it is really exciting to see that trajectory and then the, the sort of trajectory that you were pointing forward to about that yeah. new kind of um, requirement that you'll have 25% kind of member um, involvement in future productions as well. And I wonder if we could talk a little bit about values, I suppose, as well. Um, I think, uh, Roshi, you said um, that you were sort of really excited by creating work outside of clean break safe, safe space but in a sort of space that could hold your values and I wonder yeah, yeah if you could speak about so kind of values. by that I wasn't necessarily alone talking about the Donmar but mm -hmm. about what a co-production rehearsal room looks like between the two companies you know and yeah. um, but it's something as well that is um is amongst the learning that we gained from this co-production is about we were talking about it myself and Phil yesterday but how and that's why I wanted to reference individuals and when I was talking about like what works but also reference the fact that we just had a vibe about Mike being the right person for this you know because those things the kind of granular bit of it is part of where this lives mm. but one of the things that Phil and I were talking about yesterday was how a lot of it was a little bit about luck as well. So as the two companies, you know, were clear that they shared the values in terms of the ambition of this project. But why I wanted to bring it back to individuals is that one of the things I'm currently thinking about in how we, how we co-produce moving forward or what additional elements we want to put in moving forward when working with partners is absolutely about trying to mitigate the luck bit of it and trying to find ways to come together with partners and their teams and our teams and to foreground conversations about values, mm -hmm. which um, are not necessary. Everyone has them stated in their MPO application to the Arts Council, all the rest of it. 
but it's not necessarily part of the rhetoric around how theatre is produced in London contemporarily or outside in mm. the UK. Mm. And um, it should be because those words matter and when they're actually taken and examined, we've all got great ones and to try and find where they cross over. I really want to do some of that work with our partners moving forward because I think we'll all benefit from it mm. and we can ingrain it rather than depend on goodwill and luck and vibe, you know? Mm. Yeah. And the, the sort of making those values live in the, the work that you're doing together. Um, yeah, is, is, but it, it can become contractual as well. And I don't mm. mean that in terms of what we write down, but what's the compact from the outset? Mm. Is the compact that we acknowledge that we hold the value of courage close, right? Mm. How can we dig into that? And what does that mean for this project? You know, mm. um, let's, let's not assume anything, but also, as I say, let's not totally just depend on fluke. <laughs> Fluke of the good folk, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's always a good dose of fluke of the good folk, but it, yeah, yeah, sort of reliance on that should hopefully be le lessened as we go. Yeah. Um, I wonder if I could also ask a question about to sort of think about the event that we had a little bit earlier today about women-only organisation and how Clean Break as a women-only organisation that sort of seeks to um, work prim like predominantly with women artists how that kind of manifested in blank and the um the collaboration with the Dom I mean it's one of the things so it's currently in a, a collaboration that we're hoping to do this um autumn there is a sticking point around a um in-house stage manager who isn't female mm. and I mean it's kind of quite a clean rule that we have that is um no, we don't work with anyone who does not identify as female, you know, and that can be quite um, simple to understand, but it does sometimes involve, um, for instance, increased resource in order to ensure that that is fulfilled. But um, am I answering your question, Sarah? I don't think yeah. I am really. Yeah. yeah, you absolutely are, yeah. I mean, at the same time, like, you know, Mike, Phil, we know who we're working with. It's yeah. about, so the, the reason behind, so if you take, we know the reason why Clean Break as an organization is a, an, is women only, right? But then when we go into a rehearsal room, why is that vital? It, it's again, vital for very similar reasons, but it's meant more at different moments as well. Mm -hmm. That when I think about like the, our, for instance, like funding applications, the Arts Council eight years ago when I was at the company, the question of women artists and ensuring that women artists got the platforms and opportunities that they need was much more in the foreground in terms of what the Arts Council need and wanted. And, and I'm always going on to people around, um, say, again, going back to our canon, Clean Break has had has worked with literally all of the biggest and best and most progressive playwrights in the country from Winston Pinnock to Lucy Kirkwood to Chloe Moss to Barney Lavery to Tanika Gupta, they're all there. And that legacy has meant everything. But you know, you could dissect it and you could dissect it. But at the end of the day, we are a women only um, organization for all of the, the vital reasons that we know we do exist for. And the, the byproduct of that is multiple, but that's a non-negotiable is what I should have said in one line at the top. <laughs> no, but it's far more interesting that you said it in many lines than sort of unpack that a bit for us. So, so never apologize for the many, many words. And <laughs> um, I don't know if you have any reflections on that question, Phil, or if you, you sort of feel like. It, it, be it becomes a really um, exciting offer for us when, in, terms of, in terms of that shared practice. Um, it, uh, it broadens the pool straight away of who are the artists that we're, that we're drawing up lists for to work on shows. Mm -hmm. um, it changes like who the people are that I am putting in rooms for workshops and meeting new talents or giving opportunities to other people that you, you know and and that so that became really really exciting mm -hmm. uh, and, you know so we, we, it allowed us to meet more people through that whole process and and to, to work out and you know it was, it was very very clear from the off, off the relationship of where that starts where, where that starts and where that stops you know in terms of like 
you know, we were still, you know, we, everyone was still involved in that process, but who was working on the production and around it was all female. And that was um, really, really great for us. But I think there was loads of learning from that in terms of those, you know, those lists that we were drawing up of artists to, to, to as lighting designers and sound designers come to the spaces, you know, people who, uh, like, you, like that, we need to ensure that, like, we're getting more leading female artists in, in, in those big spaces. You know, Rosie Al Nile as a as a designer is someone who's incredible, who trained with a Domage resident design assistant and was given, you know, uh, like a, a main stage Domage show, like only two or three years after she'd come through that program. So it allows us to because we the building new hair, clean break, loved her, Maria loved her work. You can go, this is really, really important. You can wear it. So it, it was a really great uh, thing for us to be uh, um, a provocation. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, yeah, maybe it's useful to actually pick up on some of that learning that each of the organisations kind of took from each other. And Phil, you mentioned safeguarding practices and that Clean Break really sort of were very generous in sharing their particular approaches to safeguarding and trauma-informed practice. And um, were there other ways that, that that kind of approach that is so embedded in Clean Break kind of informed um, work that you're doing at the Donmar or sort of ex expanded work that you're doing at the Donmar? I think it was about us um, through like the you know the, you know we did this session with Anna and her team at the start of the, the 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 process, and then the it changes the conversations that I'm having with artists before we put them into this, in, into um, rooms with young people, and it changes conversations that we're having with teachers, and so it allows us to support teachers and also look at their rooms in different ways as well. So it's just the ripples are really really huge, you know, and we can have conversations with teachers in relation to the practice that we're learning from and the text that we've got with this with this offer to then go okay what do we do now and how do we support that so it it, it, it just goes through um i think it's the 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 you know in terms of like safe practice in a rehearsal room there's been a big focus that over the past few years anyway um you know equity have done some incredible work on that in terms of what those safe spaces look like so that that was um that was already embedded in the organisation, but there's, a, there's an elevated version of that about how it goes wider across the, the um, all of our work. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. And I don't know if you want to add anything to that, Roisin, in terms of learning or shared learning. Yeah, I mean, I mentioned the fact that with each production with members in it for us, there's a huge growth for us in terms of understanding where, um, what the needs are and where we can do that better and I'm sure Sarah you know but probably not everyone is that we are we were involved in a Paul Hamlin um, commitment to looking at um, best practice with well in our case members in professional settings and it's work that we want to return to in terms of research but you know since that um, moment and getting that funding that that whole attitude to kinder spaces has definitely become much more universal and the notion and practice of safer better kinder spaces for artists is um, definitely becoming more mainstream which mm. is brilliant news you know mm. and yeah. essential you know particularly for artists working with um, very difficult material like like the ones we engage with do. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, yeah, that's a really positive sort of point to flag as well, that there is a much broader conversation and a more nuanced conversation um, kind of emerging around um, safe spaces in, in performance organisations. I think, Deborah, that is our time for this sort of portion of the event. Um, it's been a real pleasure to, to speak with you both. I'm going to hand back over to Deborah now. Jeez, thank you so much, Sarah. Thanks, Phil and Roisin. Uh, we'll take 10 minutes break now, everybody, uh, for a comfort break. Go and get yourselves a glass of water, a cup of coffee, whatever. And we'll see you back here in 10 minutes. We've just been joined by Shona and we'll continue our conversation then. See you soon. Ready for the second part of this seminar. Clean break working differently. Uh, the second part, we're going to kick off Yemi, who I uh, introduced before, Shona, 
Um, so I'm trying to see everybody. I think you're here. Yes. Hello, I see you. Hi. Oh, hi. Hello. Thanks so much for joining us. And we'll kick off now with a discussion with you and Sarah and joined later on by Roisin and Phil to discuss. Thanks. Hi, Shoulder. How are you doing? Hi, Sarah. Um, I'm doing well. I'm doing well, thank you. Um, yes. How are you? Yes, I'm good. And thank you so much for joining us uh, for this conversation today. Um, and really, um, so we've spoken to Roisin and Phil a bit about their sort of pers perspective on the collaboration involved in Blank. Um, and in many ways, you're the embodiment of that collaboration involved in Blank. Um, so it would be really wonderful to hear about your experiences um, on, on the show. And I wonder sort of from your perspective, why do you feel like it was important to have Clean Break member artists performing in blank? That's a big question. Um, yeah, it's a big one to start off with. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I think at this point in time in sort of Clean Break's journey, I think they've sort of made it imperative that Clean Break members a part of performances. But I think in particular, this play, um, it was vital because these stories were so personal, um, so personal. And I know that so many Clean Break members have that lived experience of themes and topics that came up within the play. So I think f for that, it was just so important to see, to see yourself. Um, I know I was in it, but if I, if I was out, if I was an audience member watching the play and seeing that, I'd want to see Clean Break members on stage sharing these stories that have touched so many of our lives. And that sort of, um, sort of like shared understanding of that world um, and the system um, and all the different systems and how they all sort of weave and knit together and sometimes for, for the negative of, of society and for people. Um, so I just think, yeah, I think for, for that, it was just really important to have people with lived experiences of, of of that that world mm, yeah and can you maybe tell us a little bit about uh how you felt when you read that script for the first time when you sort of uh, engaged with it as a piece of work what, what kind of impact it had i mean because of the structure of blank and the way alice birch has written <laughs> that crazy crazy play is um you can kind of pick and choose um, but receiving the script, obviously I just read it from, from, from the start to the end, whatever that may be and what order that may be. And it takes you on <laughs> such a journey, such, um, such a journey where you're sort of in a very naturalistic sort of domestic setting that everybody can relate to, whether that's just having a conversation with some family members over some pasta to the extremes of giving birth in prison. And I think from when you when you when you have one scene that can be very subtle in its setting and then flip the page and you're in the most extreme circumstance it does something to, <laughs> to, to, your, to your understanding of the way in which the world works, I think, mm. um, and how close these things actually can be. Mm. And so that means like the extreme of someone giving birth in prison or the extreme of child abuse isn't that extreme because actually it's all 
it's all within the layers of society mm. and it forces you to realize that it's, it's happening and it is. Um, and I think it forces you to, to, to realize that, you know, daily domestic life is rippled with horrific and, and, and happy and extremely happy and funny things. And also, and, and, you know, it's not all doom and gloom. It is, it captures life really well. Mm. Those extremes of absolute laughter and love and friendship to isolation and just yeah mm. yeah it's it's um the format of it and the the way it's like a kaleidoscope of of worlds and mm. a rubik's cube almost and you can sort of look at any side you want to and yeah yeah well okay wow um that's like sort of really changed the way I understand the play um <laughs> thanks Shona like or sort of expanded I guess the way I understand the play like in terms of I've always seen it as a kind of collage of different experiences but that you're sort of talking about them as like the fact that they're held together and that you move from one to another extreme shows us then this this kind of experience of all of these things happening at the same time um and I wonder, so so that so firstly, revelation for me, thank you. Uh, and secondly, I suppose maybe that's a kind of example of how it felt to work on a play like this in an ensemble. So was there something, could you tell us a bit about the experience of being in an ensemble of performers working with a team of creatives on this play? Because it feels, and I know we're talking about collaboration quite a lot today, but it feels like maybe it's a text that's productive to work on in an ensemble. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's made for an ensemble, I think. It, it, it really speaks to women having shared experiences. Um, mm -hmm. And so that sort of interchangeable, anybody could be anybody at one point in time is so important to, I, I don't want to say the narrative because then there isn't really necessarily a narrative, but just important to the stories because it again it, it's that exchangeable, interchangeable thing where you know in one scene you can be playing um, a, a, a mother, and then the other other side of this another scene you could be playing you know, a murderer. And these two things can be the same thing. Mm. So I think, um, I think the, the ensemble and the, the use of that, the, the extremes and the changing of that is so important, but that particular ensemble of <laughs> women who just came together was really special. And there was just something about the way in which Clean Break sort of especially in that first week um, or first couple of weeks of getting to grips with this mammoth of a piece of work was not magic. I don't want to say it's magic because that sort of takes away how much hard work <laughs> that went into carefully crafting this process. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure if that answered you, but no, that definitely that definitely did answer and, and sort of started to think about yeah the um, the hard work of mag of making magic <laughs> come mm. out of, of and I, I always say I found myself saying that a lot about just the way in which clean break works and its processes. I was like, oh, it's this magic, and you you go there and it's everything's like lovely and light, but it's but actually it's dedication it's training it's hard work and it's consistency and not everything is perfect and magic but there is a something ingrained in the fabric of the company that just means the work that is produced from it and I think this is a, a really good example because it was a co-production with with the Donmar Warehouse that 
the practices of clean break seeped into the dogma. And that's how sort of strong the, 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 um, the fabric is that they've, they've woven into the company because everybody on every single, on every single level is sort of geared up, clued up and trained to approach things in a certain manner, which just creates an environment for artists to create and be free and feel safe and yeah. Brilliant, thanks Shona. And I, I'm, I'm gonna ask you a question in a minute about um, how your experiences at Clean Break and other organizations kind of prepared you for work at the Donmar. But before I do that, I just want to highlight in the chat because you won't have seen it probably because we're having a conversation. Um, but Anna Herman has said in the chat, can I just say that listening to Shona uh, speak brings back to my mind the moment that Shona came to our studios at Clean Break for our end of season festive meal in 2019 after Blank had finished and the whole room of members instinctively gave her a rousing standing ovation. It was palpable that Shona was being celebrated both for being an amazing artist and for the sense of her achievement being shared and owned by every one of us as well. Um, and I just wanted to read that out, Anna, because that is actually really beautiful. And I think just important to be to be heard in the room and, and for you to hear, Shona. Um, sorry for not doing an, an excellent Anna Herman impression, but yeah, important for you to hear it. Um, I, can, I can hear her voice as you, as you said that. <laughs> that was that was yeah that was so gorgeous and it was like one of the, the final times as well pre-covid that we there were so many people in one space to share in something so special and yeah that was that was gorgeous thank you <laughs> um and i guess yeah possibly like part of that kind of warmth and generosity and appreciation of you as an artist came out of kind of um working at Clean Break and, and, and sort of the, your experiences at Clean Break. And I wonder how those experiences informed um, your work at the Dom or how you felt they kind of prepared you um, for your performance in, in Blank. We, yeah, I mean, when I, when I came to Clean Break, I was at a place where I needed routine and purpose. And so I was there every week <laughs> consistently as much as I could be because it was exactly what I needed. Um, and so every day for months on end, you're in a space with other women, creating friendships really, um, and bonding and learning and, and and I think that's where the appreciation came from, not, you know, my performance, but the fact that we were together, we, we were together in a sort of, not to sound sort of, you know, like whimsical, but um, so in terms of like training, I, I did, um, I was on the advanced theater course, and that's another thing, like the practitioners that Clean Break bring in to run these sessions is just, is like incredible. Um, I was on that and I was on the writer's circle um, with Gillian Greer and uh, Maria Albert was running advanced theatre. Um, so, so, so yeah, so meeting Maria, and working with Rasheen, working with Anna, um, you're just you're just learning on the you're learning on the go, and it is like working in in an ensemble constantly, and everything is a shared sort of experience. You know, you, you get to do your own things from time to time, but it is about it is about working with other people, um, and I think for me the uh, advanced theatre. Um, working with Maria and getting to see her work as a director was invaluable experience. Mm. And at the time um, <laughs> when um, so anybody could anybody who was part of that that course could um, audition for for blank. So it was, which 
it's just astonishing anyway that you have the opportunity to be on a stage like the Donmar. Um, and I remember thinking, what an absolute privilege that I get to audition for, at the time it was Maria and Roisin. Um, like, <laughs> two absolutely incredible female directors at the top of their game, and I get to just have five minutes with them, 10 minutes with them. That was sort of enough for me at that point in time. I wasn't thinking about anything else. It was just about um, making that connection in some way, shape or form. Um, and yeah, I, I, and I just love being in that space. And, and again, it's like lunch times at Clean Break, you're sitting with Oshie and you're sitting with Maria, you're sitting with Anna, you're sitting with everybody, Tracy. Jacqueline, like everybody's ab around. It's not, there's, I think there's always a thing where people, members of Clean Break refer to members as sort of everybody. Um, so it's just the women <laughs> and that can be anybody. Um, and I love, I love that ethos and sort of mentality that we're all just here working in different capacities, but we're all here together. Yeah. Mm. And, and making work together. And yeah, whenever I speak to anybody about Clean Break, they talk about lunchtime and food. <laughs> but that as an important part of kind of building a collective, being an ensemble, sort of sharing um, kind of food and social moments together. Um, I wonder, um, this is maybe the last question before we kind of open out a little bit, but I wonder whether you could speak to the experience of Blank and, and, and working at the Donmar and, and your development as an artist, how that experience helps you develop as an artist. Because um, I know you've got some exciting things in the, in the pipeline as well, so. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, I, I, I kind of want to say it was daunting, but at the same time, wasn't really like when I when I talk about the first week of rehearsal, what was really grounding for me and re just so helpful in terms of me feeling valid in this space with these incredible actors and creatives who have been doing this thing for God knows, was the fact that we started rehearsals at clean break at my home at my at you know on my on my turf like essentially like you're coming to my my turf mm. and that was like not that there was an imbalance or anything at all but it just felt like again that thing of just like we're all here together mm. and that was just I think if I started if we started you know rehearsal there I would have been a bit, a lot more tentative and, uh, but I was on my ground and I was safe there. Um, mm. And then, and that just gave us the, the foundation to start a really beautiful company where everyone is equal and, and we're starting a journey together. And, um, and again, like the, because of the play and the topics that come up in the play, you know, there were tears, there were lots and lots of tears um, and lots of laughter to, to sort of combat that. Um, and it was a, just a really, I don't know, it was just a, really quite a special space um, and a, a special relationship that everybody sort of formed um, in order to go forth. And I think it was, um, I think that first week was just so important, starting at Clean Break, learning about what Clean Break does, mm. who we are, who Clean Break are as a company, um, having talks with so many people, listening to their lived experience. It was just such an important part of the process. Um, mm. uh, yeah, and in terms of like, being on that on that stage and having that platform, um, 
it is, I think, and I think one of the, the, the biggest things about doing this at the Dogma was the fact that we're going to have a Dogma audience, whatever that means, you know, but the, the, the demographic of audience, what is it going to be for them to see this, these stories? Mm. Um, but it also, in terms of like professionally, it's a coveted, <laughs> you know, coveted theatre space that yeah. people who have been in the game for 30, 40, 50 years would absolutely give their left leg for. So um, for me, um, it kind of, yeah, it solidified me as a, as a creative um, who was enjoying doing lots of little things here and there and just finding ways to express and write and act and perform and, and things like that and happily doing so to being, oh my God, I'm actually like making a living out of this now. Um, which I'm not the first by any means. Clean Break has, you know, have so, <laughs> so many incredible performers, actors, writers, um, who solidify themselves as creatives and artists. Um, and that's, that's really special as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Um, thanks, Fiona. I think there's some really uh, interesting things for us to sort of continue talking about and pulling out, uh, particularly that idea of, of, of being on your turf first and the importance of that in kind of co-producing. Um, and then the audience and who the Don Mar audience are. Um, so, and um, so there's loads to talk about and um, sort of if we have a broader conversation now, but thanks for being so sort of generous and kind of sharing those kind of experiences that you had um, on blank. Deborah, I'm going to pass to you, I think. Certainly. Thanks very much, Sarah and Shona. Um, yeah, really great. Oh, so much. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm back in the theatre, actually, um, reliving, reliving blank, but more broadly, um, away from, I suppose, trying to draw out some uh, broader issues and questions around this sort of process to Phil and Roisin, um, but using blank as a hook for this, what would be and Shona, if you can speak from your experience as well, were there particular difficulties? We've, we've heard a lot about the extraordinarily positive aspects and some of the challenges um, um, that were referred to earlier this morning, earlier uh, in the previous session, but were there specific challenges around this particular sort of production in mixing professional actors, clean break members, um, existing production staff at the Donmar um, with the requirements of clean break. Um, and there seems to have been a great will to make things work. Did anything, were there any bits that were particularly uh, tricky? Anybody I invite to, to contribute? Yeah, um I'm happy to talk to that. I mean, straight up, in terms of the examples that you're provoking, no, Deborah, you know, um, there weren't, it wasn't a straightforward um, preview process in terms of getting the show to, to where it needed to go to. I mean, it's extremely, it's a massive challenge for a director, this piece where you're given 100 exceptional scenes and no guidance as to what maybe line or thread or otherwise the writer wants to you to follow. Um, and there had to be a trial and error element to that in terms of using those previews for audience reception and trying to work that out. Um, so that was, it was definitely, um, a long preview session and, and it was trying to um there was it was difficult the communication sometimes with Maria who's an artist of huge integrity and who was trying to hold on to a vision and then she had two artistic directors 
who were considering more the audience than the artists. And then there were many moments where actors had large chunks of their deeply embedded, brilliant work cut. And so it was like extremely challenging. But when I mentioned earlier around um, this production, this co-production giving us more confidence to ensure that more members are more centrally in our work and on our stages, um, that I know you do, I know you wanted me to talk about the difficulties ever, but that it was absolutely about this experience, you know, and about if anything we felt, and do you know what? It was because because of Lucy and because of Shona, but it was also because the Donmar and because of like, I think maybe we preempted something, not just with the partner being the Donmar, but with a partner and slight caution around that, but it was so silly, really that, you know, um, and I did put it in the chat, but I would like to say it as well, that Shona is gonna be on the South Bank in the Globe this summer and we cannot wait. Did you, what were the other, I don't know, maybe I, maybe I, I have rose tinted glasses looking back. What were the other big challenges? I think in terms of the collaboration, I was so sure, um, but in terms of the collaboration, it, it felt like, like the, the challenges were in relation to scale, were in relation to yeah. like the size of this show and the, the, the size of the stories that were being told. And it was like, I've also like, has never seen a, a preview process like the one that we have with Blank because any like there was there was discussions every day around the production with like people that were seeing it in the office we would be having discussions about the scenes being going no no you can't cut that why have you cut that and it was like there was, there was and you could see in the company as well like like shown in the cast like a, a, like a, afterwards you could see how everyone was so attached to that material Mm. And it started, it started the very start of that process, like, you know, like, and being in Clean Breaks uh, rehearsal room at the start, and I will never forget a first read-through of a play, quite like being in that room. Like, the play was like, and the first read-through was so long, that's one of the things that I remember, because there were so many scenes, but it was the intensity of being in that space and being with those words and being with the performers, like, that, that, that were sharing them. And it was, it was incredible, but this, the, the, this, the, the challenge was only, like, only, like no greater challenge than any other show, but with this, it was about scale, because it's and to try and do that in a condensed for her, like a preview process. Like previews are always stressful anyway. But when you you know we, a, a number of us refer to it as this Rubik's cube. When you've got this thing where you can put it in where there's not always necessarily a narrative arc, but like you can create narrative arcs through this thing. There's so many options. So when you pull one thing out, you go, okay, what's the other? Like Shona, you wouldn't must have felt that. Then what's the impact of another scene and what that's going to do? What's that going to do to my arc as an as an actor? What's that going to do to the, the, the beats? So it was the it's the, the the scale which is the challenge. Does that resonate with you, Shona? That suddenly having scenes taken away or rejigged or whatever? I mean you're working with humans. If there's not going to be some conflict at some point in time, something's probably wrong. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, and I think why those cuts felt so like mammoth at the time was because of the amount of work that was put in um, through the rehearsal process. Um, people were truly in, in the world of, of the play. Um, so yeah, it, it was it was tough. It w it was tough, and there were <laughs> there were discussions every day about why is this cut, why is this cut. But also, like Phil said, you know, I think the first read through was near enough three hours long or something like that. Um, that was that was hard, and we talked about it, and 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 in in some world somewhere you know, all hundred scenes will be done. Um, but it never felt flippant or necessary. And when, for like a, for a, like a, from my point of view, when it came to points where I, we needed to talk through this, there was the support there. So even though there was all this turmoil, turmoil and sort of strife and like 
sometimes anger and confusion. Rashim, what's going on? Um, <laughs> so yeah, there, there was that 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 fallback um, there. But yeah, it's 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 part of the creative process, and it is hard. It's hard to lose stuff. Um, yeah, like Rashim said, um, I'm at the Globe right now rehearsing. Just come out of rehearsal, and lines are being cut already. And it's like, oh, well, I love that line sort of thing. So um, <laughs> it ha it happens. It happens. Yeah. Brilliant, thank you. Um, and before I go on to ask the next question, I just encourage everybody, if you want to ask a question, please, I don't know if you can put your hand up in, in Zoom or put something in the chat and we'll keep an eye. Um, and then feel free and we'll, we'll put the questions to our, our wonderful panel. Um, one of the things that keep, I mean, you, you stress this at the beginning, Roisin, was about the importance of individuals. And because it sounds to me like the way you've all been talking about how this collaboration at each stage. And as you said, Shona, it's not magic, it's work. And it's effort and it's preparation and thinking through um, at each stage. But people have to be open to that because in, in terms of wider impact, Phil, you've talked about the legacies of working with Clean Break. Is that because the Donmar is open, the individuals who are currently comprised the Donmar are open to those legacies, to carrying on those things and it would be more difficult in another, perhaps more conventional, or I, I don't know what the word is, forgive my employment relations ignorance, another theatre situation. Um, I, yeah, I think, we, yeah, it all comes back to the to people, doesn't it? And it all comes back to, the, you know, we can support a legacy because of the the, the artistic vision in our organization is so clear under Michael and what he wants to do with his iteration of the Don Mar, you know, it's, um, and, but it's also about the, and, and but it's also about the, the people that are, are, are around all of us that actually, you know, um, that, you know, you've got, you in, in leadership in the arts, you, you know, you, you're just people at the top, but it's about how the people that are around you to ensure that that vision and their voices are heard in that process that it feels like when you have Don Martin and Green Break together, that they're both very equitable organizations where voices of, of, of the staff and the team influence the, the practice and, and methods of working. And so, I bought, and it's also about those stakeholders that we have around us as well, that we can afford to take artistic risks and we can afford to do that because of the people that support that work. So the scale of the show, the shows the Don Mar would not exist without our funders, would not exist without those those donors that come and see the work, that champion the work, that invest in artists. Um, so it's it, 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 it's so it's so deep and rich as to how you ensure those legacies happen. Um, but but it's also about you know uh, about the 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 things that that, that are inherited as well. That actually like those the we can, what we can do is we can only build on what's there that under, underneath us. We can only make those those programs bigger and more ambitious based off what we're what we're working with. So with you know. The us building on, on the relationship of that, that partnership that was developed with Trilogy, then there's this, shit, there's, a, there's a slight understanding of methods of working there. Then you can work really, really closely and go, you know, and then, but also both organizations have changed artistically at that point. So you go, oh, we've got a shared sense of values here. What is it with this, the, these two new executive teams here? What does that do? So it's all about just constantly unlocking potential through that process, which then can lead to that legacy. Sounds like the perfect collaboration partner. Collab collaboration's hard. It's it, it, and it's brilliant, and it's but as long as it's rewarding when it's hard, like it's it's hard to rehearse and a play with a hundred scenes in like less than five weeks. It's to get us to that place and to to cast a show the size to to build that show. It's it's challenging, but it's knowing through this process, it always feels that that would be rewarding. So I think you know, like 
Roisin and I like do feel like you know maybe that rose tinted glasses when we're talking about this this relationship. There are points where it gets really really nutty in that in that process, but that's no different to working with any production. That's not necessarily the co-production because we all come with a shared sense of positive intent and values, and knowing that this story is so important to share and it's so important in you know like like showing what you were saying before about the importance of being in that space as well. You, you know this impact from the the. The, I like to think about the way that we do is like sending like, like sparks and catalysts up into the air. When you put something in certain spaces, there's potential for more of that to happen. And that's what it felt like we were working towards. So question for all of you then, is that what it takes to work through challenges, to get past obstacles or whatever, is having an underlying sort of shared destination? I think absolutely. And I don't, you know, you could reduce it to say the destination is the production. But for me, it's about intent, you know, and, and strategically producing blank for us. Um, it absolutely leans into everything that we have as our stated aims. Um, and then to do it with the Donmar, you're doing it on a bigger scale arguably a better scale and with a larger reach and with the potential for it to be artistically extended. But I think, you know, it's never about just the play. It's always about what it can do and where that lives and what the intent of that is. What about you, Shona? Is that, that getting past the obstacles or difficulties or conflict, like you said before, humans, there's going to be conflict. Is it is it the underlying shared destination? Do you all want to get to the same place that gets you past those challenges? I, th I think so. I mean, it's, it's not always that doesn't solve everything always. Um, one thing that came to my mind, actually, was the fact that um, Maria Aberg was weeks prior to the production starting. I know she was working on it long before um, I was even thought of, but she came to work with Clean Break as a practitioner. So for me, that's just seeing how members are, working with members and getting a taste and a feel for how clean break are and how they work. So things like that help in, in terms of the cohesiveness and how people work together. Um, and the, the impact, I mean, you, you, pre, you present the work, <laughs> the impact, and you put in place things to, but at the end of the day, the impact is only what it's gonna be, you know, after the, after the work is done, sort of thing. Um, but for, yeah, but just to just to reiterate, I think getting on the same page um, is sort of important. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. It's interesting thinking about it in terms of taking several steps back from what you're all saying. Uh, there's a lot that's really that you're saying it seems to be about voice and different people having their voices heard and in a piece like blank with 16 cast members and then uh, crew and other people around I mean a lot of voices to be heard connecting back to this morning we were talking about sometimes about the value of hierarchy in um, a hierarchy that's informed by vo other people. A theatre piece, which is essentially a collaboration, you've got then a collaboration between two organisations and lots of different voices to be heard. Um, it sounds like it just can be... I'm thinking here about universities and hoping that somebody listens to this recording of this seminar and says, 
what a great way to work with people. This produces good results, listening, trying to listen to voices and incorporating them to, to get to somewhere you'll want to go. Deb, um, it's Anne-Marie here. I was just thinking as well in, in relation to that, it's like the level of positivity, which I think is, is really key to this as well. And also literally, like I, I, when you were talking about um, the women only aspect of a collaboration with Clean Break and that being non-negotiable and also the positive way in which you reflected on that film, that this wasn't, this was, this was something to be viewed positively. Like it, it truly is positive action. And, and um, in a way that, that that's actually a very um, optimistic and good thing, not something that, you know, and, and that actually that led to loads of really interesting positive outcomes in terms of, as you say, broadening the field, giving people opportunities who wouldn't usually have them, thinking about things in a different way. And um, it's not something to be shied away from or viewed as, as something negative, which um, it can be sometimes. And I think all of those things as well, you're talking about. So I, I think this in terms of the impact of clean break on practice and Rasheen, you talked about the ecology of, of theatre, uh, of the sector and changing that in this really positive action way. <laughs> You know, whether that be having humane, kind practices, having trauma-informed approaches, being, you know, all those things. I mean, yeah, real positive action. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, you know, I'm obviously totally biased on this front, but it's also about the medium that theatre by its nature is all of these things that we're talking about. It is by its nature collaborative. It is by its nature value-driven. It is by its nature positive and it is fun, even if it is about the darkest corners. And then you make it women only with respect though. And you're cooking with gas, you know? <laughs> That's a t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> That's brilliant. Uh, yeah, I, in fact, I can't think of a better way to end <laughs> that ends this this event that's just brilliant thank you so much to Roisin to Phil to Shona to Sarah to everyone to Miriam for tweeting to everybody for joining us today um, to the, the privilege of hearing about this extraordinary world and journey that brought blank to the stage and the impact that it's clearly having beyond that, which is just thrilling to hear. So thank you very much.